Hi, folks. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. I wanted to provide a brief update on the situation between um, Iran and Israel. Um, contrary to what I had hoped, that the previous attack by Israel on Iran would be the end of it. It was not. And um, there has been an additional attack. And that, I think, leaves little room for optimism. Of course, and as you know, I am not an optimist, so you shouldn't expect any optimism from me. But uh, regardless, um, I literally don't think that there is any room for optimism, even when looked at objectively, which I try to do uh, fairly in a in a way which um, is open to a variety of different perspectives. I've considered all of those things, and I still don't see what the bright side of this thing might be. It is a real tragedy, and it is a tragedy which has continued and may continue even further. No one knows. Israel has wanted to, at to attack Iran for a long time. Why it waited till now is anyone's guess. If all it took, as I've said previously, was an attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus, Syria, to get Iran to respond and attack Israel, then why didn't it do it years ago? I don't see any connection, in other words, between the terrorist campaign in Gaza and the new war in Iran. I don't see how the terrorist campaign in Gaza has facilitated the Israel-Iranian war. It makes no sense to me. I'm sure that um, the, the Israeli government has some reason for it. I'm sure they thought it out. Um, anybody who is planning a war gets together and they make careful plans. But why those plans were not made years ago, even decades ago, is beyond me. I cannot figure that out. Um, what about now is so significant? If any of you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments section below this podcast. I would like to read what you have to say because I literally cannot figure it out. Um, I am not a political scientist. I am not... Um, I'm not somebody who specializes in foreign affairs. Um, I am not somebody who specializes in diplomacy. So it's understandable, I guess, why I wouldn't understand what's going on. But still, I've been reading various sources, and I cannot find anybody who has explained why the... Israeli attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus occurred just within the last week or so. It makes no sense. If that's all it took, and I would think that most people would say that was all it would take, you attack the sovereign territory of another country and in an embassy is the sovereign territory of another country. And you would expect to get some type of military reprisal, especially between two countries, Iran and Israel, that have had so much tension between them for so many years. So again, I've been trying to make sense out of this situation, and I simply cannot. Um, maybe I will, or maybe somebody else will, and I will read it, and I'll say, ah, that's the reason why Israel waited. 
But Israel has been trying to bait the United States into cooperating with Israel in an attack on Iran for years. And it simply has not happened. Um, obviously, the U.S. does not want to start a war with Iran. Or at least any sensible, <coughs> pardon me, or at least any sensible leader of the United States, I guess I should exclude President Trump from that equation, at least any sensible leader of the United States would not want to start a war with Iran. I mean, why? What is the point of it? Why? Iran is not a threat to the United States. Iran might be seen as a threat to Israel through Hezbollah and through Hamas, perhaps, but not the U.S. So U.S. interests are not being affected by the activities of Iran. And I think that is part of the reason why President Biden said that we will not get involved. The other reason, which Biden said explicitly, was that he was afraid of a regional war erupting. And I think that is something we should all be concerned about. I mean, there is some distance between Gaza and Iran, but not as much as many people might think. The area that is sometimes called the Middle East, or what might be called Greater West Asia, which would include Egypt, since Egypt is not in Asia, Egypt is in, is in North Africa. Um, that area is a very small area, relatively speaking. It's not huge. You look at Israel itself. Israel is tiny. Israel is about the size of the state of New Jersey in the United States. Obviously, it wants to be larger by getting Gaza, maybe getting the rest of the Palestinian territories. I don't know. But Israel itself is a small country with a lot of nukes. Serious problem. So Israel, I think right now, poses the most serious hazard to the world in the current year. If someone would have asked me that question just a few months ago, which country poses the greatest hazard to global stability? Without hesitating, I would have said, the United States. But now, I would say that the United States takes a back seat to the Zionist entity because Netanyahu is apparently willing to do almost anything. I don't want to call him crazy because I don't like it when people uh, turn things into psychobabble or psychologize people, or come up with psychological explanations for social problems. I see no evidence that Benjamin Netanyahu is crazy, but I am not qualified to say one way or the other as a sociologist, not as a clinician, not as a psychologist, not as a psychiatrist, not as a psychiatric social worker, or anything of the sort. I am a sociologist. So all I can do is look at what is happening in the world around me and try to make sense out of it. Sadly, this is a situation that I literally cannot make any sense out of. And if you can... Please share your knowledge with me. I mean that seriously. I mean that very seriously. 
I have been combing the web, looking through academic sources, trying to find someone who can explain why Israel has done what it did now. Why did it pick right now? I don't understand it. Again, I see no relationship, no direct relationship between an attack on Gaza and an attack on Iran. Obviously, the attack on Gaza was a result of Hamas coming across to Israel and killing 1,200 Israelis. So that we know. For that, we have the timing. Okay. For that, we have the timing. But what is the connection between that and attacking Iran? I simply do not see it. Let me go ahead and uh, put on my spectacles. And I will read you only a brief portion of an article. Um, this article is uh, from the Associated Press. Um, it is dated today, um, which is early in the morning today, at least early in the morning here in the United States. Dateline, Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Iran fired air defenses at a major air base and a nuclear site early Friday morning. That's today. Of course, it is it is West Asian time, but it's not that much different. Not that much different. So it's still today. Near the central city of Esfahan, after spotting drones, which were suspected to be a part of an Israeli attack in retaliation for Tehran's unprecedented drone and missile assault on the country. No Iranian official officially acknowledged the possibility that Israel attacked, and the Israeli military did not respond to a request for comment. However, tensions have been high since the Saturday assault on Israel amid its war on Hamas in the Gaza Strip and its own strikes targeting Iran in Syria. U.S. officials declined to comment as of early Friday, early today. But American broadcast networks, quoting unnamed U.S. officials, said that Israel carried out the attack. If it were me, I would have put that in the first paragraph. Um, but this is poor journalistic writing. This is in the third paragraph, but it should have been in the first. So here we find out in the third paragraph that U.S. officials said Israel carried out the attack. Most people who read newspaper articles read only the first paragraph. There have been studies on it. That means that the average reader is not going to learn that U.S. officials have said that Iran, that Israel rather, carried out the attack. Why, why that is, I have no idea. Again, just poor journalism, poor journalistic writing. Sorry for the criticism. Um, I realize that's not that important, but it is to me as someone with a, an ABJ degree, a Bachelor of Arts in Journalism degree, uh, and then, of course, later my MA and PhD in Sociology, but, that's, but this is a journalistic issue, and I've learned 
how to write in a journalistic style. And this is not it. You don't put the, the lead in the third paragraph. Okay, continuing. My, ty my, my tirade is over. The New York Times quoted anonymous Israeli officials claiming the assault, which came on Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei's 85th birthday. Israeli politicians also made comments hinting that the country had launched an attack. That is the entire third paragraph, but again, it should have been the first. Well, let me go to get off my rant. Who cares? Take off my glasses. There is more to the article. Uh, I will post a link in the uh, discussion section directly below the podcast. Uh, so you can go to the article on the Associated Press website and read the entire thing for yourself if you wish. Where do we go from here? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows because we are not mind readers. We cannot read the mind of Benjamin Netanyahu. We don't know what he plans to do. We cannot read the mind of the other people in his government. So we don't know what they want to do. We cannot read the mind of Joseph Biden. So we don't know what his plans are and whether he is still sticking by his firm or apparently firm position that he would not assist Israel in an attack on Iran. But based upon this and what Israel, I'm sorry, what Iran already said, Iran said that if there is even a tiny attack on Iran following the one that came previously, that Iran would launch a massive attack on Israel. Exactly what that means, given Israel's Iron Dome, I don't know. But massive is massive. And the attack may come from Hezbollah. The attack may come from Hamas. We simply do not know. We don't know who has what weapons and who is willing to use them. And that is the situation we are in. It is the fog of war. And we have two wars in greater West Asia. We have the war or terrorist campaign against Gaza or Hamas, same thing, and I think in Israel's mind. And we have this new war by Israel against Iran. And so wider regional conflict, the very thing that President Biden said that he was afraid of is now exactly where we are. We are in the midst of wider regional conflict. How much wider it gets, what other countries, if any, choose to get involved in this war, no one knows. So really, no one knows anything. I don't know anything. And so making this podcast was basically a way of simply updating people on the latest news um, on what Israel has done. A second strike directly on Iranian soil, not on an embassy, but directly on Iranian soil. So if there was this second strike, why should anyone think there won't be a third and a fourth and a fifth, and a sixth, and so on. Now, of course, I'm not saying that there will be. I don't know. But I think there is every reason to suspect, given the nature of 
the current Israeli government, led by that monster, Benjamin Netanyahu, that there will be further attacks. And we may literally be on the verge of entering into some kind of world war or global war. I read those I read that article earlier today where different people had different views on whether we were on the verge of a world war. Here's the problem. We are using the only world war that we have had so far. So-called World War I was not really a world war. It was a regional war. World War II, on the other hand, was a world war. Does that mean that if there is a third world war, that it will necessarily look anything like World War II? I think that is highly doubtful. The weapons have changed considerably. The geopolitics have changed even more. And so using World War II as a model for what a possible potential, whatever you want to call it, World War III is, in my opinion, a poor choice. Instead, we should be open to multiple configurations of military actions taking place not only in West Asia, but also between Russia and Ukraine and who knows where else. And the war may spread in a way that we do not think at this time. That is the problem with prognostications. When you are making one, you basically rely upon precedent. The precedent is World War II. But again, we should not, in my opinion, necessarily assume that if there is a third world war, or whatever you want to call it, I mean, pick some other name for it, that it will look anything like World War II, or even that it will be a world war in the sense that we have thought of it up until this time. Regardless, we are entering into a period of untold global tension, unprecedented global tension, and nobody knows where it will lead. Nobody knows what will happen later today on Friday as, as, as I'm speaking, or over the weekend, or next week. We simply do not know. I don't like that. Ambiguity, to me, is good. I don't mind ambiguity, because that means that there can be a search for knowledge. Uncertainty, I don't like, because that indicates to me that there cannot be a search for knowledge, at least as I define those terms. So I do not like uncertainty. But unfortunately, that's where we are. The world, the state of the world is uncertain. We don't know where we will be tomorrow or in the future, the very near future. So for the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, PhD, for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.